Hi, what's up everyone? This is Gary A. Swaby, and you're now uh, listening to or watching our spoiler-free review of BMF. And I'm here with Miss Dana Abercrombie. How are you, Dana? I am doing great. Excited to talk about this show. Indeed, indeed. So BMF, um, it actually premieres um, this, this weekend, um, which is September 26th. And it starts right after the finale of Raising Canaan. Um, and yeah, we, we got to watch uh, basically the first, you know, um, few episodes, the first four episodes uh, to be exact. And this is going to be our review, our thoughts of, you know, what we've seen so far, just so the, the viewers get, you know, an understanding of the type of show that they're getting into and what to expect and stuff. Um, obviously, we won't be talking any plot details you know, we're not going to spoil anything major. We're just going to talk generally about the show um, and, you know, what, what, you know, what it's about basically. Um, and, you know, what you can expect when you do uh, watch the show. Um, so, yeah, we, we're just going to do the same format we do with the power cast and, you know, just give our takeaways. Um, and yeah, um, once you guys do get a chance to watch the show on, on, Sunday, be sure to leave your comments and let us know, you know, what you thought of BMF, because uh, I am, you know, very interested to see what people will think of the show in general. Um, so, yeah, we'll get right into the takeaways now. Um, so I'll go first here. And, um, you know, there's a lot to talk about even without talking about the plot. So I'm just going to start here and say, um, you know, the acting in this show it's it's a lot better than you know than i was expecting like they really surprised me with the quality of the acting and i say that because you know i remember um i think it was like a couple of years ago or something now 50 cent was doing like a big casting um event in in atlanta um and they were basically you know just getting local talent to to, to be in the show and stuff so i thought this was going to be all fresh and new talent and to a degree it is there is a lot of like new fresh talent and then also some some faces you'll recognize um so i i wasn't you know expecting the the, the talent to you know really excel on a high level in the show going into it but when i when i you know when i actually started watching it and i got further into the show i was actually surprised that you know the the, the quality of the acting is good you know it's definitely there um, and then, you know, they've got the veteran actors in there as well, like Wood Harris. Um, and, you know, he, he, he always does a phenomenal job. It was good to see him again. Um, that guy just doesn't age because he looks exactly the same as he did in Paid in Full and in uh, The Wire. <laughs> so, so yeah, um, it was cool to see him. And then, you know, you have um, Russell Hornsby, who is, uh, you know, the father of... Um, of the main family and for all those that don't know um anything about you know bmf and you know the black mafia family in the history um this show is basically about the two brothers who were uh, you know who kind of um led that movement um out of detroit and those two brothers are big meech and uh you know t uh, you know th those are the two brothers um you know um and this, the the son of big of the real big Meech is actually playing uh, Meech in this series, which is very cool. Um, I know that you know um, Big Meech is a very respected man, even though he he's currently incarcerated and everything. Um, but I know that he's probably very proud to see that you know his son is actually telling his story, um, and this is a very you know rich history that they have, and uh, you know. I'm sure a lot of people are excited to see it finally play out on TV because, you know, this story runs very deep um, in, in, in entertainment and hip hop and everything. So, you know, the fact that, um, you know, um, the son of Meech, you know, uh, Demetrius Flannery Jr. Is, is playing Meech, you know, is a big deal. And I'm sure he's very proud to be representing, you know, his father in this story, like his it's a really big deal and he does a great job like you know i think even down to the mannerisms and everything he definitely you know um i mean i never got to meet big meech but from what i've heard about him and what you know i've read and the documentaries i've seen 
this guy, like to me, he is Big Meech, you know. Um, so the son does an excellent job. I wonder how much, you know, he actually had to, you know, um, do acting classes and stuff to nail this because it just felt so natural. Go ahead, Dana. What was you so going to say? To just put in some information about the Meeches's, um, mm. I did attend the, the Television Critics Association and they had a panel on BMF, spe BMF specifically. And in that panel, you know, it explained how 50 Cent really wanted him to play the character and little what is i forgot his name F Le uh, Le uh, demetrius flannery Demetri Jr. demetrius yeah. flannery he specifically went out there and took the acting classes he trained so because he didn't want to be someone who oh i just got a role because this is my dad he wants to be taken seriously as an actor and i think he ended up it translated everything that he learned through those lessons very well and he talked about when 50 Cent, you know, approached him and how the family themselves were very excited for this. And they trusted 50 Cent with his vision and what they was going, what he could bring to the screen. And so he had, you know, the very unique ability of trying to portray his literal dad and also show the world that he can stand by himself in this acting world. Yes, he, he it's easy for him to get the job because you're the son and you know your father way more than anyone else who can write on the page. But he wanted to be taken seriously and he succeeded very well in that manner. Also, it was very important to him that people saw him as people would see him as an individual in the sense that, yes, he is a part of this family. He loves his family. But this look at him in the path that he is able to take and look at the successes that he is able to garner with his pure talent alone. So that and they also went to him for like, is this information correct? Is this right? Would your dad speak like this? That he was also the fact checker as well. Yeah. And he did say a lot of things that they did get right. And, you know, he would just put in a little bit of his input, put in a little bit of the mannerisms. So it was written very true to fact. Obviously, this is a fictional story, but they adapted it as much as they can from what really happened and using the sun as the tool to be that that voice to say yes no so it was very he was very involved and so was the family yeah exactly yeah like he he's demetrius jr is a, is a real asset to this show and you know he just brings that authenticity to the entire story um, cause like you said, you know, he was fact checking, he was, you know, he was telling them exactly what happened in certain situations and everything. And, and that's key, you know, even though this is a fictional version of the story, it's still a lot based on a lot of reality. Um, and, and you see that reality, you know, within the, the show. So yeah, um, that, that's, a, that's great to know that, you know, um, the lineage is actually a part of this, um, and yeah um the the actor that plays t is uh i think he goes by da vinci or something um he also did a good job and he brought that much needed contrast to to uh demetrius's character because you know um demetrius is he's a very uh hot-headed character so having t you know kind of balance that out was, was great to see and, and the two brothers bounce really well off of each other um so yeah that whole dynamic between those two that that adds a lot of uh ex excitement to the story um and then there's another very standout character in this and um that character is lamar um and you know people will get to see who that is you know when they they, they see the show i'm not going to say too much but um you know this guy i found out after watching bmf you know and dana brought this to my attention because mm -hmm, i was obsessed he, with him <laughs> that th this guy is actually British. It's his cousin. Um, yeah, my cousin. Joking. <laughs> but yeah, like that was a surprise because, you know, the, the, the role this guy plays, he does an excellent job. Like I, I never would have guessed that he was from over here. Like he, he seemed like he was really from Detroit or something. Um, so, so yeah, that's another standout character. And then um, of course you have a lot of other familiar faces like Snoop Dogg. Um, who who plays Pastor Swift, um, and you know he's he not only is he like comedy relief, but um, he's he, unique. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's unique, and um, you know I think his role is very 
it's, it's a very uh, uh, authentic role in the black community in terms of, you know, church and everything. Like we, we, we've always um, seen that kind of guy, you know, um, in, in, you know, the church and everything. So uh, I won't say too much, but yeah, he, his character is great. Um, and it definitely the role definitely suits him but yeah it's it's a great cast of characters um in bmf and um i think you know people are going to get super hooked once they get into this this show the one thing i will say is that the first episode um it, it takes some um some some close you know you, you have to pay close close attention as a as a first time viewer especially if you're not familiar with the BMF story. Um, if you're not familiar, you know, it It might throw you off a little bit because you don't know what to expect. And it has a lot of like building to do. It has to, you know, show you the characters. Um, and I'm going to get to you in a sec, Dana. But no, that was me agreeing it. with you. That was my universal yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So Dana agrees, you know. Um, and, you know, I went into it as someone who, who, who was aware of... Um, BMF and the history, but even I was like, wow, you know, this is a lot of character development and character building, a lot of introduction in this first episode. So I think, you know, um, when people shift from Raising Canaan to BMF, it might be a bit challenging at first because they're going to have to get to know this, this world and this universe and these characters and uh, why certain things are important. And that's going to feel very slow at first. Um, so I'm just warning everybody now that first episode is a bit of a hurdle. But once you get to the end part of that first episode, that's when it really kicks off. Like, that's when the story really kicks off. And then, you know, episode two, episode three, episode four, like, it's it's going to suck you in. Um, you're going to be hooked. And I'm really interested to see what the... Uh, the narratives are going to be like online and what people are going to be saying because i do believe there will be a lot of talk about you know this show being put up against shows like snowfall and the wire and of course power um i think people are going to see this show in that light and i want to i want to see what the rankings are going to be from from certain people because um they do get very in depth with the story um and the, the it, it holds no punches so I can't wait to see, you know, what the people are going to think once they, you know, get further into the show. But I'm going to head over to Dana and let her talk about, you know, her takeaways from BMF so far. Right. So, um, yes. Yeah, so, again, thanks to the Film Critics Association. I have a little bit of a backstory of things, but I just wanted to say first that I didn't know anything about BMF. I went to Gary and was like, what? What is this? It's random letters thrown together. I don't understand anything. And he broke it down. I'm like, Black Mafia. I'm like, what is this? Is this like John Gotti for black people? But uh, no. Um, like you did say previously, the first episode is a hurdle. Um, you got to be Flojo in order to get past those hurdles. But once you get past those hurdles, this is a show. It had me hooked. I was like, what's going on? Who are these characters? I want to know more about their life. This is a show that I think did a really great job. It's showing the dynamic of a family. And it doesn't matter if you're rich or you're poor or where you come from. The universal understanding is family and what family means to you or at least should be or should mean to you overall. That closeness, that always wanting to do right by each other, supporting, uplifting. It's just people take a different path in that support. So you can have someone who is like, I'm going to be the doctor to support the family. And then you have someone who like this show, I'm going to be a drug dealer to support the family. This isn't a show that criminalizes or demeans people for making those choices. Um, and I wanted to say that very specifically because one of the questions that was raised by a specific journalist was, why are you glorifying this world? This is not a world, this criminal world is not something that is glorified on the show. It is to show a means to an end. It is to show that these people were not given the opportunity to say, go to Yale and Cambridge, but you see the intellect and the, 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 the mindset and the genius of how they're able to put together a business 
even though it's illegal, to put together a business and make it run just like it was Google or Amazon or any of these big corporate worlds that people love and they know. Um, so this was to show you know, what these people are willing to do for family. One of the things with Lamar, he is one of the other characters that we can't really go into. It also shows him and what he is able, what he's trying to do with family and how people have their own personal hurdles that they have to uh, go to. Uh, everything is not cookie cutter, you know, no business or no person that you meet is going to be perfect. And so you're trying to do the best when the world or situations is really out there to to put you down and that's kind of why i love lamar's character the most because he tries no matter how difficult it may be and it becomes so like this man is having a bad day a bad week a bad month a bad year someone give him a hug yeah you so i i really appreciated that and if you look at the family dynamics um you have you know your typical black family involved in the church you want your child to get to do well obviously you don't want them to be the next drug dealer or a gangbanger so you try to lead them on into a certain way in a certain path but you look at them they want to take care of their parents as well and they want to be able to support these are people who are like i said they are not rich people these are you have mortgages you have bills you have payments that you have to make and you need to make money that's quick because at the end of the day nobody wants to hear i don't have opportunities when it comes to paying the rent or the mortgage or whatever so this is a path that they end up taking it creates a lot of conflict within the family because parents have a certain way of how they want their kids to be and kids have a certain way of how they want to to deal with things and you're dealing also with there not necessarily is a lack of communication but everyone wants to be right and you end up with a lot of natural conflict that we do see in regards to that also the brothers themselves these are people who are tight they're thick as thieves you know and they're willing to support each other and they're willing to uplift each other so even though in the environment that they're in you see them band together no matter what and you see them you know plotting and planning and strategizing how can we get better and that is also what i really liked this is not brother versus brother or i hate you you see them fight yes you do but just like any other family you know two seconds later you hey you want a donut after you, you're fighting in the middle of the street. So I just really wanted to say, yes, that is, it is a drug show, but this is not a drug show. And it was very important that for me that I wanted to say that because that is the perception that a lot of people said, you know, during when we we're in the round table interview with 50 Cent, a lot of people who don't know our culture and don't know our history and just view us as gangbangers. Uh, here, you're part of this one, you're part of that clique or whatever it is, you're illegal. No. And 50 Cent had a really great answer. And, you know, it's an ignorant way of thinking. Everyone is literally trying to do better for themselves. I don't care what your background is. You want to achieve to be better than what you are at that moment. So that is what I feel BMF as a whole really is about. As a whole, it is about the betterment of everyone. And also, you know. Can I, can I uh, comment yes. on that real yes, quick? Yes, sorry. Yeah, so like, you know, uh, I, I don't want to throw any shots or, you know, cause any any drama or anything, but to that one reporter who who did ask that question of, you know, why why are they glorifying gang banging and, and drug dealing and stuff like that? Um, I just want to say, you know, that report probably comes from a life where, you know, that their, their parents were able to provide for them and, and, and have mm -hmm. them raised in, you know, a nice environment, you know, probably in the suburbs or something like that. But, you know, the story of black people in America is that, you know, we, we come from a background where, of, of course, you know, slavery happened. And then, you know, after that, you know, the, 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 the government system has has, you know, made it so that it's not easy for, for black black people to, to thrive in, uh -huh. in, you know, in the industry, in the industries and commercially and everything. So what happens is in these disenfranchised communities people create their own economy you know whether it's you know they start a, a convenience store or you know they become a teacher or you know they sell the drugs that they know people in the community are going to buy anyway 
um, and they use that, you know, as a way to prosper and, you know, um, give back money to their community and their family. And I'm not, I'm not saying this is a good thing. Uh -uh. Uh, all I'm saying is that there are corporations who do worse than that. You know, mm -hmm. if you knew the truth about how, how deep corruption goes, um, you know, in big industries and corporations and the government, then you would see that what these people are doing on, is no different to what everybody else is doing. This is just their their environment's way of doing it, you know. Um, right. So, and this is the, you know, this is what they've been given. This is all they've been given to do. Like, they don't have opportunities to prosper until very recently. Now, you know, Black people are starting to get bigger positions in mm -hmm. companies and we're seeing more more black people employed on in TV and entertainment and things of that nature. But you know, back then this is this was this is set in the eighties, you know, right. and we know what life was like back then. So, right. you know, when it comes down to it, this is a real story about, you know, two brothers and, and you know, their family and the, the hand they were dealt. You know, that's what this story is about. And it's not just about the drugs and the gang banging. It's about, you know, it's about the story of two, you know, uh, black brothers growing up in Detroit in the 80s. And this is the reality that they face. You know, this is the reality that the whole community faced. They had a, they had to make a decision. Were they going to struggle for the rest of their lives to, to make money? Or were they going to, you know, be active and do something about it and, you know, make as much money as they could, you know, so that they could elevate themselves? Right. And, and if, then, you know about, if you know about the story of BMF, they mm -hmm. kind of did that, but you know, they made the mistake of keeping 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 it the, the, the illegal part going when they didn't have to. So that's what happened in reality. Right. But, you know. And another another theme I really wanted to pick up on was greed. And mm -hmm. you can easily demean someone, oh, you're being greedy for doing something that you're not supposed to do, or you know, you have enough as it is. Um, these people are someone who always lived with anything can be taken away at any time. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's easy to condemn greed, but at the same time, it shows you life through their perspective. And also, if you look at, without spoiling anything, there's 50, not 50 Cent, sorry, Snoop Dogg. Um, he, he, his character, you know, is a great comedic relief. But if you look at that, even something as small as him, he has layers to how he approaches people. He has layers to what he does and how certain things, greed also can kind of impact him and his character. Um, also, this community in general, how they want to stick together and what they think they need to do in order to stick together, especially when it comes to Snoop Dogg's character, how he seems to always be there. Um, you can you could say that some people rely on him, but what are his motives as well? So this is also a show that each character, I feel, is very well layered. We're not getting, you know, here's the drug dealer, number one, and here's the crackhead, number three. We're getting people with actual layers and stories that we may not see on screen, but you know it's happening in the back somewhere with them. So, yeah, that and also another thing really quickly, when you're watching this show, and you're, you remember how you were saying, you know, people compare to The Wire and how is it going to look to Snowfall? Please also include The Godfather, include Goodfellas, mm -hmm. because what they do in those movies is no different than what black people do in our TV shows. So don't yep. separate and, 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 it by and race. Those, those films are considered classics. Classics. Godfather, Scarface, you know. All these. Libraries of Congress and all of that. Yep. Mm, they're doing the same thing black people did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so yeah. Know, that's what it is, and I, I I wouldn't even say this show glorifies what they're doing either. No. It's it's just it shows you, you the truth. it tells you, know. you the truth, but it also tells you the downside of what you're mm -hmm. doing. It reflects yeah. upon that from the very opening. We it reflects upon oh look we got the fame and the glory, but what did it cost us? Yep. Yes. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. The, there's th those themes are visited a lot throughout this show. Like we mm -hmm. see them lose, you know, like even like physical um, elements and, and things like that. Like there's physical harm done to people. Like, mm -hmm. so it shows you the cost of actually living this lifestyle. So right. it's not, it's not a glorification at all. No. So, 
but yeah, continue. Uh, I'm sorry to. <laughs> no, to cut it's you off. okay. Um, no, that was generally because we can't touch upon everything because we don't want to give you spoilers. But this yeah. was just solely kind of our point of view and what we, we took away from the show, which is absolutely fantastic. And going on what you said, this is so well acted. When you look at um, Little Meech, he feels like he's been doing this for years. And everyone, it seems to have great care and great honesty with their characters. And that also goes with the writing as well. The writing seems to be very sincere. And I don't like to compare shows, but if you look at the Power Universe, because this is kind of 50 Cent, um, you can see overall the projection of how they've improved their shows with stars in general. Where like, y you could argue that Power in its first season was a little silly. How little parts was like, oh, this is a bit, you know, no. But you can see how with their shows, they're growing stronger. And it's stronger with the writing, the casting, the acting. So I really think that this was this was something that I initially was like, I don't really know. But then when I finished, it was like, yes, this is the show for me. We're season two. Yeah, indeed. So... Yeah, uh, was that all of your takeaways? That was all of my takeaways that I can't say about. <laughs> yeah. Those are what I can so, say. Yeah, yeah, you know, we, 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 it's very strict on what we can and can't say here. Um, but yeah, great, great points overall. And I, I completely agree, you know, acting is great. This, you know, this is a big step up, you know, um, in the stars, you know, line of, of TV shows, especially the ones coming from 50 Cent himself. You know, th this is a huge step up and you know it just it amazes me at what they've been offering lately because we get raising canaan then mm -hmm. we go straight into this we're getting book two after we're getting tommy force like the lineup is is really really amazing right now um and this show has you know it's it it's going to show and prove um like i said you know uh I'm a bit, you know, iffy on what the reception will be after the premiere episode. Yeah, but, you have to stay with it, though. But, yeah, like, please do, regardless of what you think of the first episode, stay with this show. Because I struggled. Won't be, you won't be disappointed. You I had a list of, like, what's going on? I don't understand. Why does it look like this in the color and the acting and all? But, no, stay with it. It's for yeah. that. It's for a reason. They're getting in the footing. Yeah, exactly. So definitely give this show a chance. Like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, it's not one you want to miss. If, if you're a fan of Power, you're a fan of Snowfall, with The Wire, these kind of shows, this is one to watch. Um, and if you are familiar with the BMF story, you're not going to be disappointed at all. Um, and the only thing I, I want to add to this uh, review is that I'm very interested to see um, where the music direction goes in with the show in the long term. Because the thing is, um, BMF's influence in in rap music is is huge. Like they they've you know they've signed artists. They had artists affiliated with them. Um, you know there was Big Jeezy and um, like there's there's a lot of other rappers that were very inspired by Big Meech and the movement. You know even Jay Z, Rick Ross. You know um, uh, you know there, there's loads. So I want to know if if there's going to be some of that music incorporated into the show at any point, because I remember an interview with 50 Cent a while ago, like uh, it's probably like two years ago now, where he was saying that he's actually going to approach, you know, some of the artists, some of his peers, you know, that were kind of big at the time he came out, you know, with his album and stuff. Um, and he's going to get them involved, you know, with the show. So. I can't wait to see, you know, where, you know, what that, what's going to happen with that. Um, and I do also want to say, since I'm talking about music, um, it was very interesting to hear another song from 50 Cent as the, the intro of the show and everything. And I wonder how people were going to receive that, because um, I think a lot of people were probably expecting it to be another rapper who was affiliated with a BMF. But um, I think, you know, it's, it's 50 Cent show and... Um, Big Meech and the family gave their blessings to 50 Cent to portray this. And there's, you know, if you think about it, there's no better rapper who could uh, portray the themes of this show than 50 Cent, because that was once his lifestyle as well, you know. So so I think, you know, it, it works, the intro. Um, and I just want to see what the future music direction will look like and also what the future of the show will be, because there are many notable stories about BMF and real life hip hop icons 
So I want to see if, if any of those stories are going to be reflected in the TV show moving forward. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's what I want to say about he that. He would not give those details, Mr. 50 Cent. <laughs> oh yeah, they've been very, they've been like, very, very tight-lipped. I'm like you have Eminem in here. Who else is in here? <laughs> Let me know. Yeah, I, I, I wish I could say something about Eminem, but we can't right now because that, no. that happens after, you know, the, what we're talking about. But, uh, but yeah, <laughs> yeah um, definitely pay close attention to the show. You won't be disappointed. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, just be patient and stick with it long term. Those those are my final words. Um, if anybody has any comments or any uh, questions they'd, they'd like to ask, you feel free to do so in the comments. We will cover this show again, you know, as the season progresses. So look out for our content, you know. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much uh, all we and can our say. Interviews. And our interviews. Yeah. Oh yeah, Dana has a with fifty cents and the is. I'm, I'm a little jealous that you know she has those interviews with fifty cent and. And Demetrius. Well, uh, I told yeah, you she, it was it was going good until like, why are you demeaning black people? <laughs> and then you know he handled that question. Though he ended, it, he was like classy with how he handled it. And then he said something hilarious at the end. Well, I'm still making more money than you. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're they're just lucky they didn't get the the IG version of Fifty Cent, you know, because <laughs> it could, you know. <laughs> That's why I said it was like this is classy and professional. Yeah. <laughs> They, they got the professional version. So, <laughs> you know. But yes. yeah, um, great show. Um, mm -hmm. And any any final words, Dana, before we end this off? No, final words would just be, you know, keep watching, make it past the first season, I mean, episode, sorry. And this was really enjoyable. This is not something that I gravitate to just naturally. It's not because you... I'm from the person. I'm from the kind of, of background where it's like, why are black people always being portrayed this way? Mm. And then when you look and you peel back the layers with the show, let me just go into the show and not be judgmental about anything. And it surprised me where it's like, oh, I understand. I get it. It doesn't make excuses for everything, but it tells you what life is just verbatim. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and one more thing I want to add as well is that this is a very suspenseful show as well. This is one of those shows where it's going to be like, oh, please give me the next episode now. I can't wait another week. Like it, it's one of those, it's one of those shows. Like, we, we, yeah. Uh, yeah, we can say there are like scenes of action that involve shooting and outs that is just so high paced. They know how to really get your energy just going. And it feels like a thriller aspect to it as well. Because you remember, these people, their lives can end at any moment. Especially when you see how they get entangled with um, each other and with outside influences. And there are moments where you're like, oh my god, he's going to die. And then here comes the gun. Oh my god, I'm hot. And like there was a, this is in the trailer, so it's not a spoiler. Where you see there's a shootout in a, how, in a house with an overweight guy. We can say, and he has a shotgun. Mm -hmm. That scene was phenomenal, and how they choreographed it, how it came out, and then me just like in the corner, like having a heart attack. So great. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a lot of like you know high, uh, intense scenes, and you know high suspense, um, and and that only comes with great character development. So expect a lot of that, but. Um, but yeah, that, that's pretty much it for this review. So, you know, like, comment, subscribe, leave a comment, um, ask us your questions. Um, and, you know, definitely, um, you know, once you've seen the show for yourself, definitely let us know what you thought of the, the, the episode. And, you know, if you're excited for episode two, you know. So um, until, you know, until next time, we, we're, we're going to sign off, but we will be back again for some more BMF related content in the future. Um, and also, if you haven't yet, check out our, you know, Powercast where, you know, we will be recapping the finale of Raising Canaan. It's so, so you know, good. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is phenomenal. And and what could come in season two brings a whole nother story. Yeah. 
Yeah, and be on the lookout for more interviews from Dana. You know, she interviews people from Power, from BMF, from, you know, a lot of TV shows, Walking Dead, AEW, anything you can think of. Like, she's like the number one interviewer right now. So. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just trying. I'm just trying. It's hard out here. <laughs> yeah. All right. Take care, everyone. Peace out.